Wastewater Support Committee for <coughs> Tuesday, February 5th, 2019. <sighs> Any public comment? Good. <laughs> um, uh, approval of the minutes for January 24th, 2019. Madam Chair, I'd like to uh, make a uh, proposal that we approve the minutes of January 2014. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have a, an update <laughs> from Megan on where the where we are with information from the health department. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Megan Eldridge, health director. Mm -hmm. um, so the board met last month in January, and they did approve the zero fee for sewer connection permits. So. That's the permit that an installer would pull from the health department to connect the house to the, the sewer main in the, in the road. So that was approved um, without any public comment. No one came to speak on either side of that. Uh, they also officially approved the fee for the licensed utility installer. That's set at 125 per year. That application and fee are finalized so if there's any installers out there chomping at the bit to get licensed it is now available uh, and they they had brief discussions last month on uh, sewer waivers and extension requests so that's still on their agenda um, when that order comes to connect and a homeowner wants to request an extension to connect they they've been looking at a list of criteria for what is an acceptable request for an extension and what's not so that's on their on their radar they know they have a couple years to get that finalized uh, but they are looking into the same type of criteria that considers um, what an income is to be considered low income what an income is to be considered for a tax abatement so they're, they're looking at income, they're looking at age of system, they're looking at the personal situations. Um, so they, they're still on board with being accepting, accepting requests for different reasons. Uh, but that, that will be a, um, a couple years in the making, I think. So if there's anyone out there who wishes to comment or give their opinion on that, the board is always willing to listen. It's kind of all that's been happening over the last couple of months. We've been very busy with other things. Uh, so that's, that's the update from the board, Board of Health. Yeah. License utility installer, that, um, they approved that for 125 per year. And like I said, anyone? That hasn't been approved no, no, no. yet. No, no, uh, the Board of Health did um, give their recommendation to the selectmen back in December that they would like to see that change made in the regulations that both an engineer as well as a license as a sanitarian could design the plans and they also gave their recommendation to extend the ex, um, sewer connection time frame from one year to two so that has been back over to the selectmen and I believe they have Put that over to Chatham for their opinion as well, um, but it, it, it's not a it's not a Board of Health regulation. So all we can do is re recommend, and it's up to the selectmen to change that rec that regulation or bylaw. I have one question. The the um, what were we supposed to? Was it, I, I'm thinking it was the licensed utility installers where we, they were supposed to um, apply for this, and um, I guess somebody had to come up with questions or some sort of form that they were going to have to mm -hmm. answer is that for the licensed utility installers and yes you know when that's going that's to ready um, that was approved last month the application and the fee yeah, for the licensed it. utility installer oh, all right. All right, so. um, it's the same basic application as the town of Chatham uses there is not an exam to become a licensed utility installer it's um, a, a, a criteria for their their liability insurance or workers okay. comp and All right. their coverage as well as having some recommendations from other towns right. that they've 
done this install, this type of install, and um, they'll sit down with me. Any new application, whether it's a septic, food, or swimming pool, sits down with me to go over the regulations to make sure that they understand them and what the process is for ap applying for a permit, getting inspections all the way through to the compliance. Um, you may have heard this, Megan, but there's so much going on just in case you didn't. Uh, last night, Dave Young said that Chatham was also moving in the direction of allowing um, registered sanitarians uh, in addition to professional engineers. So <clears throat> maybe that will help facilitate um, the change for all. That's what he said anyway. I don't know. That's great. Yeah. Madam Chair? Oh, yes. Um, we're looking, Town of Chatham is looking into that. Um, but there's been a local engineer that states that there may be a mass law uh, that may prohibit that. Hmm. So I need to explore that a little mm -hmm. bit more. So, um, okay. Just so you're aware. All right. Thank you. Peter? This little change of subject, have you, have you been having any walk-ins come in and uh, inquire about their septic system and, you know, start to work that process? We do. We still continue to have people call and come in. Um, we did have someone calling about their existing system that's over on the, the Harwich uh, Dennis line. It's, they're in phase seven, I think. So um, we're getting inquiries about the other phases. And as we move towards the Yarmouth Dennis treatment plant option, the phases may change. So we're kind of keeping an open mind on whether East Harwich will be complete before we start the other side. Um, <coughs> So the, the, the plan has to be flexible as far as whether we're going to build our own plant or we're going to use Dennis plant because location-wise where it makes more sense to run the pipes. As far as the adaptive management plan. Yes. We, we try to be adaptive. We, we keep telling people phase two is a done, a done deal. That's happening next. Right. But the, as far as what's happening after that, it could change. And I, I know that you and Dan have committed, Dan Pelletier, the water department, have committed to having these little workshops, if you will. Yes. Uh, in the spring. Yes. Is there any further definition of those or defining when they'll be? Or? We're still so up in the air because the the contracts haven't gone out to bid yet. The the approval hasn't come back from the state. We're we're hoping to get that very soon. Uh, but once things go out to bid, then the ball will start rolling as far <coughs> as we're able to figure out whether the contractor is going to go neighborhood to neighborhood or if they're going to do everything at once. So we, we'll be coordinating with whoever gets the contract and and try to target neighborhoods rather than do a, a large everyone is invited type of seminar workshop. But we are doing them. We will. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Just so you know, I'll be hosting the um, E1 Amphidrome uh, training on February 20th. That's going to be held by uh, FR Mahoney. Where is that? That's going to be in Chatham at the community center from 9 to 3 on the 20th of February. So, um, you know, it's more of a nuts and bolts kind of training, but there may be an overview that may be beneficial to you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. What's the topic? Uh, E1s, grinder pumps, and oh, okay. amphidrome. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Good. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, old business, the contact card status update. Okay, let's see if we can maybe move forward with this. So um, I have, since our last meeting, I did meet with Dan and Megan, and they provided valuable input. Unfortunately, Dan couldn't be here this week. So with this project, we just never seem to be able to get all the people in a room at one time, and that's what just going on anyway. So. Um, I did send it to the Board of Selectmen for their meeting last night, and unfortunately they put the wrong version in the packet. So they put the original version in, so I handed out the other one. Did they take an action? Yes, they voted to uh, go ahead. So all we have to do today is just <coughs> give this our final blessing since no one ever really saw the same version, you know. Um, now I'll, I'll tell you um, if they want when they can have them. I ran out of my photo stock. So um, on the card itself, I believe it was Megan 
who, uh, it was either Megan or Dan who suggested that after the question, um, are you a seasonal resident that, you know, if I could fit it in, they liked having the address. And Dan thought that would be very helpful because, um, you know, a lot of times in a lot of our databases, they have the addresses of banks who pay their mortgages and things like that. They don't always necessarily have the physical address of somebody who spends half the year in Florida or stuff like that. So he said if there was room, um, you know, that would be a helpful thing. So I managed to squeeze that on. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to say because unfortunately we've never had all the parties in one room at one time, you know. There were things <coughs> that uh, Dan and Megan liked about the revised version from the committee. There were things they liked about the original version I presented to you. Um, last night it was voted just as, you know, go ahead, you if know, with have, the... If we have the money. Yeah, that's, I'll take care of that. Um, with um, what's been presented, and um, so so, what's your what are your thoughts at this point? I I like it. Did you want to say anything, Megan, about that having that main contact number? But I'm kind of getting used to it now. Here's the um, probably the it's very similar to the one you saw except for I put in the mailing address. Yeah, my only comment is you, you may want to just, on previous experiences, when you ask someone for a yes or no, <coughs> the spacing between the yes and the no will be j just, um, you know, what you run into are things like someone crosses out yes. Uh -huh. Does that mean no is okay? Okay. If you separate them a little bit, they have to clearly define one or clearly get rid of okay. one, you know, as opposed to if you're just putting a line here, well, maybe you come over into the no a little bit and yeah. you think you did yeah. no, no that's you know a good what I mean? Point. So yeah. if you just add another space or two there, right. I think you have room to do it. Uh, yeah, I will, and actually I'll ask the advice of the printer too, yeah. they might have. Yeah. And I forgot to mention, on this there will also be a town seal, it's just my little printer yeah. isn't, isn't capable of putting the little circle on it. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're adding it right now. <laughs> You know, my my comment, I believe we talked about this right. together, Noreen, with Dan, was the main contact. I'm confused on why we'd be writing the number again rather than just writing, would you like your, to be contacted by home or cell? That way the person's not writing their phone number again. Right. I know it gets frustrating when I'm filling out school contact cards I have to write every phone number five or six times so I know it can get frustrating but um, okay. just confused on what you what you're trying to res to get when you say main contact is that how you want people to think their preferred contact method um, is that how you yeah is that yeah. different from the one above right what are you trying to get at are you trying to say yeah. um, please contact myself first or um, um, I know with other contact cards that I fill out it's primary number secondary number um, and it doesn't really matter if it's your cell or your home it's, you're gonna call that number most people just have a cell at this point um, so whether I think it should say something more like primary and secondary contact number it's just my suggestion this revision came from the committee, so mm -hmm. yeah, I think when we discussed it, I mean, there are some people who don't want to get this call at work, for instance, and that's the reason to have something like preferred contact. I think that's perfect wording. That's what I had. The chair made me change it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's uh, preferred. It's yeah. more of a appropriate. Suggesting change the word main to preferred. Yes, that's, I think that's I think that's preferred. <laughs> so, like I said, then my question is, what's the difference between that and the one above it? Well, you know what? Well, it, it might be a third number too. Mm. Well, they fill well then, H. then what number are you going to call? The preferred one. And why would you put the other one up there? Then I wouldn't do it. Because it might be a couple in a home where they're, both of them are tag teaming it. Well, the one above is for um, robocalls. Robo 
the police uh, message system. Well, it doesn't hurt mm. to have it in, I guess, right? I mean, if they write a number twice, yeah. that's the worst that can happen, right? You'd be lucky to get one number, but I mean, if you get... <coughs> you can choose. So preferred is what you'd like to do? I, I think preferred it allows people to choose their their primary. I don't have a problem with that. I it's, mean, fine, it's fine by me. It accomplishes what I was trying to do with the first version. I just had different wording. I had that receive yep. um, information by phone with two lines. This is a little more direct. So, you know, it doesn't have the primary and secondary, but these would be, Megan, for phone calls, not to the whole group, but like, you know, if there were three houses that were supposed to have appointments that day and you know, something happened, so. We need to cancel, we're not coming tomorrow, or, you know, anything along those lines. As I was saying, yeah. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we okay, accept. Okay, excuse me, um, I don't really know if we need to vote it. I mean, we already voted once, and then the Board of Selectmen voted, you know, so, you know, for these insubstantial changes, I mean, I don't find a need to vote. I mean, all right. I mean, how do you feel? Just change it. Just Does change everybody it agree now. with preferred? Change the preferred. Sorry. I'm, All right. I'm good. You'll note it in a minute. So don't worry. I right. want to change. Thanks. <laughs> I so guess, it, am I the only person who read the number sign there as potentially being something like Twitter or some other a digital means of You're the only one. Yeah. You're right okay. <laughs> You know, my, one of my biggest concerns with this is actually, um, of course, I have an older population, but, you know, so many people don't even use email anymore. You know, I have so many friends that want nothing but text, but that's like a bridge I don't want to cross yet. So, so when, when you say Twitter, you're going into that land, yeah. you know, of, uh, um, Yeah, I have friends who won't respond to me except in text. Okay, which, all right. Yeah. Um, are we finished with the contact card? Let's... Yep. So we're going to change Maine to preferred, yeah. correct? Yep. We're yes. putting a town s uh, seal on this, yep. correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Everyone's in agreement? Yes. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. That's okay. Great. The next topic for discussion is the spreadsheet. I think Peter has some ideas here. Yeah, I think everybody was given the big copy of this thing last time. And I'll just remind everybody, this, this started out way back when, as Sharon going through. <coughs> A lengthy list, which is probably 20 or so pages of uh, items that just pop up in all different um, documents, if you will, related to what needs to be done or tracked and that type of thing. And then I think you and I met a couple times. Mm -hmm. We whittled it down to this four-page thing. And then I got to thinking about it more and more. And I'm sure you all did the same thing I did, which is a whole bunch of markups and whatnot. List of suggestions. Okay, so, so I came away from that, and I'll just pass this out. And this is just an example or sample. Um, my idea is instead of having this stuff spread all over the place is to get it focused. So, for instance, and you'll see this, you, you, you have a category called planning department. So what are all the items that the planning department is primarily responsible for? And you get those focused so that when we have meetings with the town planner, for instance, <coughs> you can focus very clearly on what those items may be. Uh, likewise, the other one on here, I have water sampling and monitoring, which basically is, is Heinz prop. And what's all the stuff that, you know, Heinz basically in this document. And then it goes on and on, the Tucker Review Committee, et cetera. And so my suggestion is, if, if you like that concept of trying to focus this on who the responsible party is, or parties are, that um, you give Sharon and I some time to reformat this and get it back into that shape, because we're still on the point of trying to get rid of some words, because some mm -hmm. of this stuff is pretty lengthy, and get it really targeted to what it is. What is the action, or what is the requirement, that type of thing. So that's just my suggestion. Uh, we could spend hours sitting here going through you know, everything, but I don't think it's a workable document yet, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting one that raises some topics. And by the way, by going through this, you know, the topics, Larry, about, you know, getting the, the Cape Cod Commission to issue a certificate for phase two. I mean, you know, whether that was going to happen or not, but it certainly raised it to a new level where I think you reached out to the commission and they, act, you know, you got some dialogue going there to say, yeah, we're doing it and we're in the process of getting it done. So, I mean, there are some valuable things here, technical review committee, all those kinds of things. There's a lot of stuff to be done. 
it's a matter of getting it organized so that you know we can all deal with you know what it is we're doing so that's just my suggestion to try and make it simpler um, and maybe you know this isn't meant to be an extensive list of what the breakdowns might be um, you know but if you start thinking that way I think you can give us some uh, guidance on that that would be helpful but my suggestion is again Sharon and I have been working this so if you'd let us keep going for you know a few more weeks then uh, we might have something we can actually deal with so. yeah, I too was um, going through the original document and trying to relate it and I only worked on the public engagement section initially uh -huh. and uh, it seemed to me because this constantly comes up both as an obligation but also people say who is that and really it would be helpful to have in the outreach to the towns having a simple list of who the stakeholders are even if it's just a, a position in the town um, it says in there that we should pr promote a new wa wastewater association I don't know the status of that um, uh, Again, there's a list of stakeholders in the environmental justice community and associates. It just would be useful to know we're obligated to contact these people. So a simple punch list. Yeah. As and a sub as a sub part of. If someone can figure out who all those people or organizations are, that would be helpful. Yeah. I don't know who they are at the moment. So. And I liked your um, uh, under the adaptive management plan. Uh, I mean, that's going to be pretty core to some of this. So I'm taking, again, a punch list uh, yeah. approach there um, in that the it would be really helpful to have um, a list of the integral requirements and, the, and <coughs> the stages is a little dicey because that's a moving target, obviously. Um, and the, the, the original document refers to... Um, the formal limits within the 208 and so if we could consolidate that into a punch list if it's possible some of this it might be more directional mm -hmm. but that that's my initial thoughts on okay. this so I'm just going to hand this Good. to you as my list All right. and Can I write your name in the top just please so do okay. and you'll notice it's not handwritten <laughs> you can read it I can't all right Okay. Any other discussion? No, I just, I, you know, I think that sounds like yeah. a, a good way to organize it. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. So did Chris leave? He did. He had a, uh, he had a conflict with nine. You know, he was pretty last night. He was sick last night. All right. Okay, so <coughs> can't so the water help take care of that? <laughs> Extra. Extra. All right, uh, so there's no Q and A. Wow. Um, Can we have, could I ask oh, a question go ahead. maybe? Go ahead. And Larry, I'll just put you on the spot. Could you give us I, I know last night uh, CDM Smith, David Young was on the agenda, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Could you give us some highlights? We haven't, we haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Uh, yeah, I can try to uh, give a few. The, uh, let me start at the end and, and okay. see if we get questions. The, uh, we had a, a good discussion on the, on the Dennis Harwich Garmin. Uh, regional plan that we're moving, hopefully moving forward on. And uh, what Dave, uh, and it's in the packet, it's on the web, uh, gave some uh, uh, cost savings that, will res that could result from that uh, working together. Uh, as you know, for Harwich, we would reduce our cost by about 34%, I think he presented, compared to the regional plan. Uh, and so financially, it makes a fair amount of sense. There, uh, Noreen? Yeah, I'm sorry. I want to stop you there before you go on. And I don't want to get into the weeds with the inflation all of a sudden going on to the costs and, and the other things. Right. But um, in that chart, which I have if I need to pull it out, um, of cost savings, they listed the our treatment facility at the transfer station right. as $76 million. Yeah. Now, we've been carrying the number of $28 million right. for... 10 years, so obviously the number's old. But 
my heart has a problem believing a number like a 34% savings when it's based on a number that's three times the number I was carrying. You know what I mean? You know, it's like you're going it's, to a store, yes, you're going to a store it, and they say it's 50% off. Well, you know, they just raised the price, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's I'm bothered. A, right, it's a rough estimate now. I think, uh, and they continue to uh, uh, try to get those numbers. Uh, what we're inter interested uh, is, is to, uh, as to your point, is to get more details behind that to get firmer numbers going forward. Right. I have a problem we're, telling the public that we're going to save 34 percent when well, we don't know what's I, the base of. Right. Uh, I don't have a problem in, in that. Directionally speaking, no. it, it'll be uh, it, it should be substantial savings. You know, logic tells me if you have one plant that you're sharing and not building one all by yourself. You know, we've had the experience with Chatham that it makes it makes sense what those real numbers are. Uh, the uh, other part we're waiting on yet is, uh, uh, as Megan's mentioned, we're, it, it will influence most likely how we're, how we're phasing in the CWMP. Because if we uh, uh, have a chance to, uh, to join a, uh, a sewer plant there, connect to that, it, our, our recommendation from our, our committee is, is that we, uh, we move up to phase uh, Four, you know, phase three is doing a little bit of, of northern uh, Pleasant Bay, and then uh, uh, and move right after that. The next phase doing uh, along Route 28 in uh, West Harwich, which has some. Yeah, let me uh, you know say that because then that uh, allows us to uh, take care of some issues there in terms of uh, people that are sewering and, and uh, what we hope to do in the business uh, economic development in that area. But that may change, uh, you know, how our phasing impacts the uh, the pricing, our our expense budget we have now. You know, if that changes, so we're still trying <coughs> to get those numbers. Uh, I agree, with Norman. A lot of that is is uh, rough estimates at the moment. Right. Uh, I had questioned one of our local uh, at our small meeting, the increase in the CWMP over 40 years from basically 240 to 300 million dollars. Uh, Dave gave the explanation last night that, you know, if you uh, uh, apply the uh, three percent inflation rate, and they move that target back from 2000 and whatever it was, 14, when the initial CWMP was put in place, to 2020, you know, it shows an increased price. Those are so rough over 40 years. I don't know what you do with that at the moment. But of course, we didn't use that method when we went to bid. Excuse me, when we went to town meeting last year. We didn't use a 3% inflation factor. Uh, we did on the phase two. Remember, that was bumped up. It, not by a flat rate. It wasn't bumped up much. I it, that it, no, it was. It <coughs> bumped up several million dollars yeah. in 20. Yeah, we did that for the, for the uh, phase two. That, that we did do, but not for the whole 40 years. Uh, Val? Madam Chair? Yes. May I? Yes. Okay. Going from 28 to 70 some odd million. I need um, to check where that came from. So, know. you know, I'm having a hard time with that because Chatham certainly was not $78 million. Um, they're proposing an SBR and that, that type of treatment plant. And that's uh, basically construction's less, should cost less than a conventional, as well as the footprint. Uh, that's the, the advantage of an SBR. Um, I, I've reached out to <coughs> Orleans, who uh, AECOM is designing their uh, facility, which is going to be SBR, and I'm waiting to hear back. I, I, I'm having a hard time believing that the costs are going to be that, yeah. that increase that significantly. Yeah. All right, we'll go back and look at those numbers. The, the other, uh, because it's, it's, it keeps changing every time we get numbers presented to us right. at right. the moment. You know, every time, it, and this happens to us, and we meet monthly. You know, Don and I are the reps, along with Chris from Harwich, and we have from, you know, two uh, selectmen from each of the, each of the towns. And you know, right now, it, every time we look at the numbers, it changes. So I'm waiting to see what, where it settles out. And could I just say so that I don't send you in the wrong direction? That was, I feel part of the problem last night, was that there was so much information given, and there were different charts for Dennis, different charts for Harwich, different charts for Yarmouth. 
that, so there was no detail. So it's all just a blank number. You know, what is in that 78 million? Did that include some piping? Did that include interconnects? Did that include, you know, so we have no idea what components, you know, are in it. So that was part of my and, problem. And that's a good point, because I think part of the cost included in that was for recharge areas. Right, yeah. So it's just not the physical plant. So we had, you know, have to uh, be we sure we're, not, we're comparing apples to apples. Sure. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. You got two towns suing each other over the school. How's that going to impact us? Uh, let me uh, let me bring a bigger elephant to the room right now, and then I'll come back to that elephant. The, the uh, bigger elephant at the moment is is that to move ahead, we have to get uh, approval. Let's go through the state house facial legalization, and that was filed by uh, uh, was filed last fall, in hopes that would go through their wherever that session is just before Christmas. The spatial that's a bit, as I understand, a tricky session because you can do some minor things there as long as there's no objection. In any case, it didn't make it. So it's been refiled this spring. It was refiled in the last month. The spatial legislation allows us to move forward. Uh, the chances of that happening now, in the next day or two, which we need to, you know, the next couple weeks we need to happen if we want to put it on the town meeting warrant. And so the best guess now is, I think, uh, I know Dave presented an optimistic case. He didn't mention it. I think most of us feel that uh, best case, we may get that through this summer. So maybe uh, we either, that gets, that, this discussion going to town meeting gets delayed uh, either till next uh, spring or the other towns are talking about a, uh, and we are, you know, we, we, would we want a uh, special town meeting in the right. fall? Some of the other towns do it. Now, interesting to your, so that's that's really, right now, that looks like that's gonna hold it up a year <coughs> to get that through. Uh, as far as I can tell, talking to our reps, there's no one really objecting to it, but you know, things move as they move in the state house, and that's not, they, they don't think our, our spatial legislation's on the top of their priority list to, it wasn't last fall, they were concerned about Airbnb and other things that were going through, and so no one pressed yeah, what we wanted to do. Uh, Erickson, to your point, obviously Dennis and Yarmouth are uh, fighting big time. Uh, but even within that fight, the feedback we're getting in that meeting is, is that uh, they, they still see merits of working together on this because of the uh, potential cost savings. Granted, we don't know what those are exactly. Uh, the idea that instead of having uh, three plants and taking up land in three towns to do that. You can consolidate and, and Dennis has a location they, they're willing to use for that, uh, which makes it uh, simpler. And so there's advantages, you know, there's financial and there's other, it also puts us in better uh, uh, position to apply for 0% SRF funding, right. things they want to do. So there's some reasons to move ahead. And, and I grant that we don't know what, I would argue that we're going to get significant savings on this. I just don't know what they are right. at the moment. Uh, well, by partnering with Chatham, there were significant uh, benefits, from benefits uh, both financially. Times. Oh, yeah, 0% interest the whole bit on the yeah. SRF. Yeah, it moves us a long way. So we're still trying to push that forward. The, uh, the argument that they're having now between, and we actually are kind of on the outside looking in on this, is the uh, makeup of the... Uh, of the uh, committee. Initially it was, uh, well it doesn't matter what initially is. Right now it's, uh, the argument is whether it's two from, uh, it's two, 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 in other words, two reps from each town, <coughs> or uh, Yarmouth is arguing that they should be two, two, three, and they should get three reps uh, because they have the, uh, the most flow and therefore they're, they're paying the largest percent of it. I think if you look at the figures last night, we're, if it, based on the flow, we'd we'd, be, we'd cover about 24% of the cost. Uh, Yarmouth is up more like 40, I forget how that in front of me, 45%, something like that. So they're arguing they should have another rep. Uh, Don and I are sort of on the outside looking in. We wanted, initially they had two, two, one. Uh, Harwich is only one. We argued against that. We wanted two just because of vacancies and, you know, various reasons. But that's not in discussion now. It's between 
So they haven't reached that agreement on, on whether Yarmouth should have two or three reps. And uh, I think our position is, a, as a harvest group is, either one, we're okay, you know, we don't have a big say on that. Um, two questions. So, <coughs> and, and I know you can't control <laughs> you know, some of these things I have. Control anything. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> You know, if the special legislation, let's say that there was, you know, magically that was going to go through this spring. The other thing that really bothered me on the schedule that was given out was that it talked about having local town information meetings in January and February and then a three town public information meeting in April. I mean, because this is so huge if that was if this was going to May. So maybe this is a moot point. But Didn't we if, miss January already? Yeah, we did, and and I think, I think CDM might have been referring to last night as one of the information hearings, and I'm just going to say, you know, that's, it, it's not a good method, you know, to get information out right. to the people. And, and I, I agree. I've argued against that in in, in, right. in format. We need but, to get the uh, information out, but that may not be the best. Tool. Right. But and and where I'm coming from is we just saw a situation just last year where some of our most concerned um, residents were the ones that had always been in, you know, tentatively in phase eight, and all of a sudden they woke up and they were in phase two. You know, so that, that was the biggest jump. I mean, about, I think, 50 or so of them, you know, that was the biggest shock. Um, and so now we're looking at a similar situation with people out in West Howitch that, you know, right this minute would have no idea, you know, that they could possibly be slated for the next, but, um, but I know you can't control that. But, well, but more well, information out and earlier from, from CDM would be helpful. Yeah. Uh, you're right. These are possible phase changes that have to have a lot of public discussion. You know, there's, there's merit to that. Uh, but we have to see. Right. Yeah. But, but you say a lot of public discussion, but the schedule laid out by our engineers was really minimal. Well, the... Uh, <coughs> We need public discussion. I, I'd rather uh, be sure we get public discussion when, when we're uh, comfortable with all the facts that are presented to us. Well, but the only thing is, we but this is what they put out last way. night. Pardon? This is what they put out last night. This is in the packet. This is what people either heard last night or are going to right. go on the website and look at. So, right. you know, here we are again giving. Well, I'm not, I'm not willing, uh, you know, I, what we asked for last night was what Val, what you suggested, or Noreen, one of you suggested, is that we get uh, some more uh, information backing up basically the, summer, the summary numbers they gave us last night. Because I'm not willing to argue that those are incorrect at the moment, because we don't know what made up, for instance, the, uh, the sewer plan. Is that just the, the physical side? Is that, uh, you know, the pumping stations involved with that? Because they're trying to look at, is it recharge area? because they're trying to put together a packet. So I'm not sure we're comparing apples to apples That's when you right. say 28 to 76. It, you know, it, it could be very, very and different. And, and, they've, and Dave and uh, <coughs> Mike Buse is here, they promised to bring back the numbers that, you know, below the summary data that they gave us. So I wouldn't throw that out. I'm not willing to throw that out, that they're incorrect at the moment. Right. We, need to, we need the backup data so we're comfortable with it. And uh, second point, different, um, you know, um, CDM went on a bit about spending some time to save us money, which is great, by working with MassDOT to combine future programs with opening and closing the road once and possibly having MassDOT be the final one who touches it. Well, I found that a little bit alarming, but again, we don't, we, you know, we just know a few words. We don't know a lot of facts. Maybe we have to start attending your meetings. But the thing was, he also mentioned accessing that area by going down Lower County. You know, that's a concern to me. And even if we went down one of those, you talk about using Mass Dot. you're talking about complete streets. And we know this town is not, you know, user friendly to the complete street concept. So, I mean, I don't even really understand why all these terms are being thrown well, out if they don't work for Howard. Let me, in our discussion, and, and I agree, it got a little crossways last night a bit, 
our discussion that we've had in our committee has been that it hasn't been that complicated. It's been uh, working with MassDOT, you know, if they're, or utility, whatever. If anyone's doing road work, digging up a street, and we think it's going to be one of our phases, we should be putting pipes in there mm -hmm. so we don't have to come back to that. And it may be some years before we use those pipes, but we don't want to spend the money to do it twice. And so it hasn't been into a long discussion about, uh, it's more of just saying that, you know, learning from MassDOT or, you know, the towns, if they're going to do it, we want to be informed so we can, okay. you know, do what we're doing. It hasn't been more complicated than that. I like that version better than the one I heard last night. Right, it wasn't explained well, and it, you know, it, it was a long meeting, so you don't want to, I don't like to, but I think we're okay with it. That's part of the, if you look at the certificate, that decision, that's included in there where we are supposed to be working with MassDOT on that. That's in there. Right. So, so we are. I, I guess my, my question is, is, is CDM Smith, have they really read that? Because so many of the things that come up, it, it's like we're playing catch up, like with the um, certificate of, of compliance. All right, that's in there. Uh, and what, we, yeah. so we're, we're playing catch up again. So just how much of that have they really read and are they aware of? Because I, that should have happened. Yeah. And when we brought that up before, that's what I was told. CDM Smith is gonna handle that. They know what needs to be yeah. done. Uh, I'm going to assume that they've been, uh, that, you know, they put it together, they've been watching that. Maybe no, well, they right didn't put wrong. it together because it's only going I, in now. I would, uh, I think if there's a, if there's a mistake and your, and your spreadsheet's helping us uh, uh, maybe get back on track on this, is that uh, if, if we're doing, you know, we're in good shape and I think sometimes we're, uh, we're taking stuff for granted because we keep getting, uh, votes of approval from the Cape Cod Commission and from DEP through your efforts here, through our Pleasant Bay Alliance, through the DA. And so I'm not sure that we're uh, taking these, uh, what you're referring to as seriously as we should. People know about it, but they keep saying, ah, oh, don't worry, you guys are the yeah. poster child for what's going forward. Well, that's kind of what happened last night. that may come night. back and, you know, sometimes you get praise so much that you forget the fundamentals. And I would think that they're, they know it, it's, it's just that they're, we need to be sure we pull back and, and, are, and are doing our job. I don't, I'm not, I don't think I want, I don't want to go the direction you're going and say you don't know what's going on. I think we're, we're all listening to our praise too much and not, and, and you're doing a good job in your spreadsheet bringing that forward, so. That, one of the reasons I was going for essentially punch lists, even yeah. if they're very, very basic, is it gives everybody a means of controlling and making sure everyone is on the same page. And it also means that if somebody's not on the same page and isn't paying attention, it can be quickly brought up yeah. up front. And I've been to many of these larger meetings with the 208 and you know everybody constantly refers to stakeholders and, and it's really, really helpful to have a list of who they are and what needs to be done. And with MassDOT, I mean, that's a fairly basic consideration. If it's right in the documents, mm -hmm. then we need to make sure that the question is asked, and what about MassDOT, and what about this? And not saying we'll get back to you, but if you don't have an answer, we have an issue. Yeah. No, no, that's right. And, and, that's, and, and you know, let's face it, the, uh, even the Cape Cod Commission and DEP has, has, has changed their their language in the, in the document, the email I sent you where they're going from a, uh, a district, uh, the uh, a compliance statement to mm -hmm. so-called consistency yeah. mm -hmm. document, which is in some ways less rigid in the, and it moves the decision to the Cape Cod Commission with the DEP sort of being uh, advisory rather than the reverse of that. So, you know, they're changing <coughs> what their requirements are even within the document that we, that we initially have. So, you know, there's some moving uh, targets. I, I thought the Cape Cod Commission, uh, their response back on mm -hmm. the questions that you guys asked were excellent. So we're in good shape. They, you know, they, they asked that we, uh, the certificate is pretty much their, they've also taken that for granted. We've done all the paperwork that we need to maybe follow up something more formal. They asked, as you know, that we include the New York Committee. Uh, they sort of hedged that. Uh, invite them to a meeting maybe once a 
every so often? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I must say that um, that was what Larry's referring to, well, from that and from Dave's thing last night was they suggested that the TRC would really be whatever existing wastewater committee was in operation at the time and that that committee just invite um, the Cape Cod Commission to stop in once a quarter and the DEP to maybe stop in. Um, I mean, this, you know, this isn't the time for a lengthy discussion about that, but that might have worked with um, several of the previous wastewater committees when there was a representative from CDM Smith, you know, being paid to take minutes and be on hand, but we're so far out of the loop. You know, there's no way you could call us a technical uh, review committee, so I would um, not be in favor of that myself. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, stepping back, Orleans put dry sewers in, in anticipation yeah. of it. I'm, I'm curious if they ran into any issues or if MassDOT, and they did that in Main Street, as I understand it, because MassDOT was coming I in there. That, yeah. And I, so it isn't uh, a new concept. Yeah. And uh, I'd be interested in just reaching out and seeing if there was any uh, pros or, oh, well, definitely pros, but any cons to that approach. That's a good point. Well, I'll raise that and see what they. That was last summer, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. And granted, Main Street's still in horrible condition. <laughs> still, 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 yeah. Except the pipes are in the ground. Yeah, at least the pipes in the ground. But I think that's a good concept. Um, yeah, I'm going to reach out and see if, if there are That'd any. That'd be good. That'd be good. Because as I said, there. It's not too complicated what they're trying to do. They're just trying to coordinate with Mass Dot so they're not digging up the road. So, Larry, are you saying if somebody doesn't have to the State House within, I'll just say, the next two weeks, that that article, whatever, to you know, to take the town meeting to you know adopt whatever, will be taken out of the warrant or not included in the warrant? We'll we'll have no choice. Yeah, that's correct. That's what I'm saying because we can't. Uh, Put a warrant article in if we don't have the spatial legalization to back it up on what the language is. Yeah. Could I ask, um, was there ever a committee or is it the DHY committee? Who was writing the agreement that was supposed to, is that the right word? The That's being, uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, you know, a spatial legalization and then that, and that's the form, the, that then allows us to put together an agreement between the three towns. And so our discussion in the agreement between the three towns is what we get into the three, the two, two, three, or two, two. But Who's writing that is uh, CDM Smith uh, put together, uh, actually uh, copied the uh, uh, Norton, Mansfield, wherever the third town is, their agreement, because that's special aid. And then it's been uh, further reviewed by uh, KP Law because KP Law works with us and they work with uh, uh, Dennis and they've been working with the committee so they've, they've vetted it. Uh, the drafts of the spatial legalization and the uh, agreement has also been uh, uh, sent to the, uh, uh, through our state rep right. for the review of the uh, state government to uh, see where if we're in line. The reason I asked is because um, at any town meeting, whenever it is, it's the agreement that we would be voting on, correct? Right. Yeah, so I mean, it's the agreement, until, we we until we see the agreement, there's not even any point in talking about anything. And, it, and we can't finalize the agreement until we uh, get the space legalization because there's, uh, you know, we're sort of being pushed two different directions. We, we would like to do some, uh, maybe some more changes, but we're told very, uh, Strongly that if we if we mess with the spatial legalization that they're comfortable with in Boston, then we're in trouble. And that's what they told us last year. We couldn't change anything, and then yeah. and it didn't well, go through anyway. But so from what you just said, I'm going to say that it's not going to happen in May, because even if they pass the special legislation in March, that's the first time that we the town we the town would see the agreement would be like April first. So yeah. no way you're going to vote on something May sixth. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but yesterday, from what I understood, CDM also laid out a schedule. Yeah. Which is apparently the same as in previous, but for the folks at home who don't know that schedule, could you kind of just lay it when people can anticipate the project going forward as far as East Harwich and the sewering? When, when, when are the bids going out? 
What's what's the deadline? The, uh, When's the shovel hitting the ground? Yeah. The uh, as they've said in the past, they being C D M Smith, they're they're putting out uh, the bids in at two parts. You know, it could be one firm does both, or they get two different firms. Uh, their schedule to present last night was uh, in March, next month. They were more specific last night. They said the first contract would go out the first week in March. Yeah. The second contract two weeks, would go out two, two weeks, weeks later. later. Yeah. Yeah. The RFP. That's the that's RFP. The RFP. Right. Yeah. Pardon me. The, the RFP, RFP. Request for proposal. Request for the bid. Yeah. So the RFP is going bids. out, yeah, and as then, opposed to getting the responses back. Yeah, yeah. and then right. the awarding of the contract would be approximately May. Yeah. Erwin? Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe even sooner. But okay. And then when it, when's the shovel going to hit the ground? Uh, I think they're still proposing that they would do some work at the spring. Really. Uh, but mostly in the fall. Okay. You know, it's, I think it'd be. Uh, it's hard to tell me sometimes how I, those. Schedules are too optimistic. I think most people would see it in the fall. Okay. It may, if maybe everyone. And I would expect that as part of the RFP, once the contract is led, that within the first 30 days, they have to come up with the, the contractor has to come up with a schedule. Yeah. It, you know, yeah. And, and I'm guessing they would start working on some side streets or something. Or, you know. Well, that's been the intent is to go ahead and, and do some of the side streets initially. Uh, but that's right. I, you know, according to procurement, Laws, uh, Chris keeps explaining. They, we can't dictate once it's out on the on, on the order of things. For instance, you know they do these side streets first, or that they work with everyone else. So the main streets would be done probably in the shoulder seasons, and the side exactly. streets are going to be during the summer or whatever. Yeah, that way the ball keeps rolling. Right, Larry. Um, is there any way we could be informed <coughs> if there's going to be a pre-bid conference, just so we could be a fly on the wall? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure I If ask there that. is going to be a pre-bid conference, it'd be yeah. nice to stop in and yeah. thank I'll, you. I'll try, to, uh, I'll try to press that forward. Okay, otherwise, uh, I think, uh, you know, phase two is moving forward. Uh, you talked to Megan as you left, but, you know, bailed out. Uh, so that's moving forward. The, the discussion last night was on the uh, uh, utility installer. Be sure we move that forward. And you raised a good point, Val. I, I didn't know. Uh, you know, we've gotten, uh, which, which we haven't agreed with entirely, because uh, they were not sure that KP Laws actually looked at it in detail. Their initial response was, well, we could, there's enough flexibility in our agreement with Chatham, we could just move ahead without their agreement. Uh, we've decided, uh, we being the board, has decided not to do that. Uh, we want to be sure that we're. Uh, mirroring we're we're in line with our with our agreement uh, I guess not only the letter of the law but just that we're not going in a different direction than they're comfortable with because we are, are trying to work together this on the sanitarium what is the utility installer the IMA with Chatham oh okay what's well, your I question th Peter no I, th I thought the utility installer yeah, the stuff sanitarium. the sanitarium yeah yeah. The installer, yeah. yeah, using that instead of a design engineer, a, a right. PE. And, and from what I understood, uh, Chatham is receptive to that yeah, concept. They, However, there's a local engineer who's saying, "Wait a second, there's something. There's a law out there. How obscure it is, I don't know, and I need to find out." That prohibits this, and it may just be this engineer who doesn't want the competition, who, who may be saying this. I I have no validation of that yet. Uh, and Val's right, you know, we meet, uh, you know, Peter, you helped set this up, but we meet with Chatham, uh, yep. supposed to be like every six months. We had our, actually had our first meeting several months ago. And during that time, with Bob Duncanson and their people there, they were very receptive to, right. you know, there's no, as far as they are with extending the, the uh, debt, you know, the time frame from one year to two years, because as we all know, if both Chatham and Harwich is moving at the same time, there's no way that there's not enough people anywhere near us to, to do all the work <laughs> in one year time frame. So it's a practical necessity. Nevertheless, uh, we're trying to, uh, uh, you know, come to an agreement with Chatham that we can, that we're okay with that. Okay, I have one last question. You don't where, look well, Sharon. 
I don't feel good. My back is bad. Don't take that seriously. <laughs> I have one last question. That's pretty question. smooth, Larry. That's good, yeah. <laughs> Ask where your question. We, where are we with the RFP for the project manager? We have heard nothing. That The board voted on that on December 17th, and we have heard zero. Well, and that came up last night, as you know, yes. and, and I'm, I'm disappointed because I keep saying emails saying, what's the status of that? And now with, I get, it hasn't uh, been finalized yet. We're, we're, we've asked to put that on the agenda for next Who's Monday. working on it, is it? Well, you know, our assistant town minister is working on it. He's no longer here, so I'm not sure who's picked up the ball on that. Okay. Right. Sorry that's about just, the answer, yeah. but that's where we are. We're, it's, it's just really disappointing. It, it's we're, very disappointing. We're, gonna, we're putting that back on the agenda to, uh, next, uh, for next week to be sure that we're moving ahead on that. Uh, you know, needs to go out. I'm, I'm disappointed it hasn't gone out yet, but it, it hasn't. Well, since we're covering these things, um, I will mention that at the end of my push for our um, – uh, contact mailers last night it was a good opportunity so I threw in a plug and asked that we be put on the agenda for <coughs> wastewater information center and I saw people jotting things down so I would expect us to be maybe on next week's or maybe one soon so if uh, members could gather their ideas for uh, what we might need not necessarily the location because that's for the Board of Selectmen to pick but um, just so you'll be aware, it was a good opportunity, so I went for it. Yeah. And, and I continue to push that and haven't got a response from that yet. Okay. So. Uh, okay. <coughs> have I confused you enough? <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Larry. Yes, thank you. All right, so just to make, um, as far as the announcements, there is going to be no meeting for Thursday evening on the 28th of February, all right? Um, so the next meeting, it looks like, should be March 5th, which is a Tuesday morning. Good. All right. Madam Chairman, I'd like yes. to make a motion. It's counting on us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll listen to you this that time. That we adjourn? <laughs> yeah. I'd like to second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right.